Hi everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day. Um, I'm here to talk about another great book, um, Power by Linda Hogan. So to start off with, <laughs> we honestly have to talk about how much this story just brings out the irony that the American society has, especially towards Native American people. So to begin, we have the Panthers, right? Sissa, you know, that's referred to, that's a term referred to the Panthers by the tiger people. Um, we have the sacred animal that is an endangered species in America now. Thanks, <laughs> American side, society can rely on them for anything, right? And they're considered endangered species, of course. And it's funny just how America tries to show that, oh, they care so much about this, this animal that is like, you know, nearly endangered, that's nearly extinct. However, in limelight, they're still doing the same thing to the Native American people, the Taiga people in this instance, um, in the same breath, under the same sun. But, you know, they care more about the animals, but yet you're over here doing the same thing to the American people, trying to push them out and trying to make them try so hard to integrate into American society. And I just find that so funny. And I feel like Linda Hogan does a great job at doing that. Because when you really look at it, honestly, it just shows just how ironic, how ironic American society can be towards these people. For centuries, you have been pushing them out, out, silencing them, um, preventing them, removing their resources for your better good. And try like and 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 it, it honestly makes me a little frustrated. But I'm but I really really do like the fact that Linda Hogan brings it up in this book, and I find it quite silly that they had Ama, one of our characters in the book, go to a court to receive jurisdiction from American from an American court based on the Panther Sizza, even though I feel like it should have been more handled solely to the tribe, to the tribe of the Taiga people. Um, even though she did get jurisdiction from both, I feel like it should have been solely handled by the Taiga people. Because, I mean, not only are you already removing them from their environment, you know, and then trying to force them to involve themselves in white American society, just like um, uh, Omishito's um, mother is trying to do the same thing. Um, it, it, just, it, just, it just doesn't it doesn't sit right with me. And I really just hope that more people tend to read books like these so they can understand a perspective coming from both sides. And you know, how and how damaging it can be trying to force yourself to like, you know, mesh into these cultures that's not even that's not even part of part of your culture. You know, it's it's something it's already something that these people are already being deprived of having the things that they already that they that they solely had and rightfully had because they were here first and that this is their land but messed up enough that you have the nerve to jurisdict them under your law that you brung over here it, it just it, it's not right and i feel like this book really brings in the fact that we need to be more inclusive and and uh, and honestly just be more aware that some things are just meant to be handled by you know who 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 rightfully needs to handle that situation but um that is honestly my take on linda hogan's book um power great story and i hope more people get to read it soon and yeah have a good one guys catch you around bye